Good day to all of you, uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, it is just uh, a pleasure to come uh, to you again with our breadcrumb. I just want to encourage you to continue on this journey um, that we have uh, taken from the beginning of this year. Uh, uh, the tour of truth. Amen. We are taking a tour in scripture that God may reveal his truth to us. Amen. We know scripture says that the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So saints, I pray that you will continue to allow the Holy Spirit to be your teacher as you continue on uh, the readings. But today we'll be talking about um, the accounts of the demon-possessed man, uh, the 12-year-old that was resurrected from the dead, and the woman with the issue of blood. Amen. And I'm going to use Matthew's account uh, that we may talk about this. Uh, remember, again, you can go on the title portion of this video to see uh, all the verses that pertain to this story. But um, I'll read from verse 28 uh, of, of chapter 8 um, in Matthew. So uh, it reads, When he came... Uh, when he had uh, come to the other side, to the country of the Gergesenes, they met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that no one could pass that way. And suddenly they cried out, saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a good way off from them, there was a herd of many swine feeding. So the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herds of swine. Well, one thing we notice here is that the demons were able to identify who Jesus was. You know, demons are spirit beings. And so they were able to identify the spirit that was in Christ Jesus. Amen. They knew that it was the Christ, the Son of God, that was in, in the body of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, if we, as we read scripture, we know that you know, uh, the devils were cast out of heaven. So they, they knew who Jesus was. So this is another you know, revelation uh, for us to know that Jesus was the Son of God, which is really... Um, something that is is rejected by every other faith aside from Christianity, and so um, brothers and sisters, uh, as you read this, um, I hope that it it brings more confirmation to you. And uh, I, I want us to pay uh, attention to uh, some of the things that uh, one thing in particular that the devil said in verse thirty one. He says, "So the demons begged him, saying." If you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of swine. You know, every time you ask for permission, that indicates that someone has authority over you to grant you the permission to do whatever you have to do. And so this here is just a sign uh, that Jesus shows us that he has authority over uh, the demons. And what's amazing for us Christians is that Jesus gave us the same authority in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And he said, Behold, I have given you authority to thread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Notice that Jesus says here that the devil has power, but he has given you authority over that power. Amen. And it's high time we begin to exercise that authority. When I look in our society and I see how the spirit of the Antichrist is uh, reversing every uh, a thing uh, 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 that God set forth, every perfect standard that God set forth, I begin to ask my question, like, how is it that he can do this when we are with authority, amen, to really trample on scorpions and serpents and command every power of the enemy to leave. Amen. So uh, uh, just, I pray that as you watch this video, you will realize who you are in Christ. And I think that's one thing that the enemy fights is our identity 
in Christ. Amen. He's giving us the authority. We can speak words of life. We can speak words of death. We can bind Satan and his works. But it's going to require us to know who we are in Christ and walk in that identity. Amen. And we can go a little bit to the uh, account of um, the woman that had the issue of blood for 12 years and the young girl that was resurrected. Well, you notice um, a, a, a great ruler, it says, and doesn't mention his name, came asking Jesus, my daughter has died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will be healed. You notice the man came with such faith, knowing that Jesus will do that. And scripture says that if we ask and do not doubt, if we ask and do not doubt, everything we ask will be given unto us. Amen. He says, Jesus, this is in verse um, in Matthew 21, 20 to 22. Uh, he says, so Jesus answered and said to them, assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will do you will not only do what was done to this fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive it. And so that is the criteria of receiving uh, what is yours in the kingdom of heaven. It's asking in faith and without doubting. Well, we see that habit here in the man knowing he came with all faith in what Christ could do because saints, uh, the name of Jesus Christ at this point began to spread and hearing that he believed, he believed that Jesus would do what you know he had done for many other people. And, uh, and, and, and on his way there, we see another act of faith. The woman with the 12, uh, with the woman with the issue of blood for 12 years. I mean, she comes just, just, she put her, she put her faith in the fact that if she, she could just touch the garment of Christ, the garment of Christ, she will be healed. And just her faith in that caused her to be healed. I mean, also, there is many that can be said uh, about this story. But I just want to point to the fact that when we come in faith in who Christ is and what he can do, he's going to answer our prayer. And that requires a continuous walk with the Lord. Amen. Because Jesus is still in the healing ministry. He wants to heal. He wants to, you know, manifest his power through his saints. So that the people would know that we serve a God with power, not a God made with man's hands. Amen. And I, I noticed one thing when Jesus finally made it to the 12-year-old who was laying dead. When he went there, people who were there, it says in verse 24, it says, And he said to them, Make room, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. I mean, you just imagine that the Son of Man, the Son of God himself, comes to perform a great miracle, and people are there still ridiculing him. Amen. Well, Jesus did say that a servant is not above his master. And let us just uh, know that there are certain things we are going to do by faith. And even, and even when people see that the great works that Christ will be doing through his servant. You will be ridiculed even in the midst of that. Amen. But take heart, take strength. Jesus said he overcame the world. Amen. And we too can overcome the world if we remain in Christ. Amen. So um, these are the few things I wanted to point out uh, um, that the Lord gave me to just point out to you all uh, so that hopefully it will be a blessing to you. And the most important one uh, for me is that we have authority over the power of the enemy. Don't give room for the enemy to come into your life and cause fear and cause you to doubt who you are in Christ. In doing so, he has put down your shield of faith. And every fiery dart that he fires at you will achieve its purpose. But saints, I know that you trust the Lord. I know that you love the Lord Jesus. I know that you believe in him. Continue in faith. Walk in faith. Amen. God bless you all. 
It was a pleasure to come to you today with our breath from. I pray that you be blessed. Amen.